Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to take a call on the first reading of uh, the jury's the jury service and protection of the particulars of the jury list information amendment bill. It's a very long title and great headline. And I should say the government intention is good too. The government wants to make life easier for jurors by ensuring that defendants do not have access to jury members' addresses and that certain people are exempt from serving on juries due to their difficulty personal circumstances. The government also wants to ensure and preserve the integrity of the jury system. So this bill is designed to improve the jury system's administration and integrity to help maintain jurors' privacy, safety and security, etc. etc. We do agree that defendants have access to a jury addresses is problematic. So this bill is designed to prevent offenders uh, sentenced to home detention from serving on the jury, uh, protect addresses of jurors, uh, excuse people over 65 and people with uh, chronic ill health or permanent disability from jury service. But the problem is the addresses could still be accessed through other means, and we do not think this bill will make any difference as the defendants who want to find addresses will still be able to do so. Uh, there is a loophole in the Sentencing Amendment Act which created home detention as a sentence in its own right, but failed to amend the Juries Act. This meant those who had served or were serving a sentence of home detention could still sit on a jury panel. People convicted of a custodial sentence of more than three years are barred for life from sitting on a jury. This bars people from serving on a jury if they have in the previous five years been sentenced to home detention for three months or more. This puts them in the same category as those sentenced to a short term of imprisonment. But on the other hand, defendants need to have certain information available to challenge the persons selected as jurors. This ensures that the defendant has a right to a fair trial, which is a fundamental right. So overall, there are four issues I wish to deliberate on. Uh, on the, the bill's first reading. The first one is there will be no regulatory impact analysis and regulatory impact statement on this bill because we were told that the proposals set out are expected to have no or minor impacts on businesses, individuals and not-for-profit entities. Secondly, according to cabinet papers last year, there was uh, a According to cabinet papers that last year, there was an incident where a self-represented accused corresponded with persons whose names and addresses were on the jury panel for his trial. This raised concern about the safety of jurors and it was decided to amend the Jurors Act to restrict access to jurors' address details. So this bill is a great example. Uh, Mr. Pokwen may wish to know this for. This is a good example of the government's reactionary approach to the justice system. And thirdly, defence attorneys and advisers to defendants representing themselves will not be allowed to show addresses to defendants. But in reality, Mr. Speaker, they will still be able to see and hear the names in court, so arguably they could still look up to the addresses on white pages or more conveniently on electoral rolls. Fourthly, currently the Juris Act already allows people to be exempt from jury duty on the grounds of occupation, business and a state of health, physical disability, uh, family commitments or other personal circumstances. They have to satisfy the registrar that they or some other people would be caused undue hardship or serious inconvenience if they were not excused. Further, the registrar must excuse people if they are 65 or over, 
if the religious beliefs are incompatible with the jury service or if they have attended for jury service or served uh, as a juror in the last two years. This bill will allow for that exemption to be excused if that works basically permanently. I uh, had the great pleasure of listening to the Honourable uh, Rick Parker, uh, who made a great speech both on this bill and also on sentencing aggravating factors amendment bill last night. I totally agree that both bills offered great headlines but had little or no real impact on the real issues. So we're looking at the two pictures. So what do we get, Mr. Paul Quinn? What do we get is there are two pictures. On one hand, what do we get, what we're looking at is headlines, headlines, and headlines. And on the other hand, the real issues are still uh, sustain and persist. I got a huge problem regarding this bill. Mr. Pokwem, introducing a bill and an urgency that makes very little material difference is an abuse to parliamentary processes. And this is a question for you, Mr. Pokwem, to answer as well. I wish you take a call and thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh,